Robin, you had a piece out. Wall Street's go-to guy yep. trips up. Is he in big trouble? I think he's in some trouble. I don't know. It's not a career-ending blunder, but, you know, I think, you know, he for so long has been the golden boy among investors uh, compared to other banks, CEOs, and he's been so outspoken, and now he's eating a little humble pie He's today. eating a little. Let me quote you, Okay, Robin. please do. The losses are particularly surprising because the detail-oriented Mr. Diamond is intricately involved in much of the bank's minutia. He is known within the walls of the bank's Park Avenue headquarters for walking around with a handwritten to-do list in his breast pocket of items that need to be addressed. Robin Seidel, was he walking around on his list, his to-do list, saying, call Ina Drew and Bruno Ixel and tell them to double down on the trade? <laughs> Did he have a, was it written down on a list? Tell journalists a month and a half ago that this is just a tempest in a teapot. Was that on his list, Robin Seidel? Um, I didn't see his list that day, Evan Newmark, so I don't know if I can answer that one for you. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me ask you, Liz. You've yeah. been reporting on this story. We had Lloyd Blankfein, the Goldman Sachs CEO, and he's been, he's been getting nothing but bad PR for a few years now. True. JP, uh, Jamie Dimon was the guy that was held up. You know, why can't he be more like Jamie? Definitely. Do you think Lloyd Blankfein today wants to be more like Jamie Dimon? I'm not sure, but I think that I think that they're still taking lessons from how Jamie handles things. Like on the call yesterday, he was very upfront. You know, we made huge egregious mistakes. He wasn't explaining market making. You know, ad nauseum for ten hours in a row. So, so, so you do, know, you, do you think uh, both, you might still want to be both Jamie? Of, That's what I'm saying. Both, both, question to both of you: Do you think he's given where he is right now? Is Jamie Dimon handling this in the best way that he can? I think he's in a tough spot, but he has handled it uh, in his characteristically blunt way, using words like egregious, you know, this is not the way we do business, sloppy, things like that. And I think that is very much part of his appeal to so many investors who want to hear people talking, uh, you know, in, in real terms, and that a lot of other CEOs don't do. But while he has been blunt about quote-unquote mistakes that were made and all that kind of stuff, he's also been blunt, Liz, about the Volcker rule. Mm -hmm. And he's been blunt in opposing it, basically saying, let us run our business, we can figure these things out. Right. Doesn't this kind of contradict his assertion that they can figure these, these things out on their own? I think it definitely raises questions about this portfolio and what was it doing and he how said can it, was it sort an, of not be said, a prop desk? He said it was an economic hedge. What is right. an economic hedge? Robin Seidel, well, what is I an think, economic hedge? Well, I think we're hedge? all trying to figure that out. And, um, yeah, I mean, look, this is a very little-known um, department within J.P. Morgan. It's not the investment bank. It doesn't have the risk controls. We found out that the investment bank does. Obviously, there could be an argument, gee, maybe it should have. And so it was tucked into this business that nobody knows anything about and was, you know, doing its business you know some might say willy-nilly and, and the word hedge kind of gets used a little liberally I think across Wall Street in general you know a hedge is also a bet and you know if the hedge goes the wrong way you lose money so you know I, I think that an economic hedge makes it sound a little safer than it really was what do you think the rest of Wall Street is thinking right now as they, as they look at this if you call your folks over at Goldman Liz what do they say do they say oh couldn't happen here or do they go you know what you win some you lose some Jamie Dimon is losing one today. Well, they definitely admit that hedges don't always work, right. and you know, you can't hedge everything perfectly. So, right. I but but they also you know so very much say you know we're not really a bank, so we don't have this department. Right. <laughs> I, think, I, think I think they're, I think they're very mixed in their views of today. I mean, I think there are a lot of people who do not like. Jamie Dimon from the other banks, and they're finally saying, "Ha, Mister!" His, yeah. Right, exactly. He got his, and they, and then on the other hand, they're also saying, "Oh my God, this is really going to mess okay. things up for us." Final right. question for you, Robin, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you for a prediction: <laughs> Is this uh, temporary black eye heals six months from now? We never talk about this ever again, or is this kind of going a permanent stain on Mr. Dimon's record? Yes or no? Uh. It was uh, either or. I, I think it's. Um, I, I think people <laughs> will not forget it. I don't think it's a a permanent stand.